everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so happy to have you here today and before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube. It is completely free to subscribe and I would love to have you as part of my crafty family. Now today's video, we're going to be talking about how to make stickers with your Cricut. This is a process that I think a lot of people are super intimidated by, but really it's very simple and this is a great beginner project to get you introduced to using Print That Cut. We're going to be using some Neato Labels sticker paper and I'm going to link them down below if you'd like to shop. I really like their product. Super high quality, really inexpensive and I absolutely love it. And you can always save 25% when you shop with them on Amazon using code Corinne25. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how to do this and I'm also going to link some more print and cut videos down below for you in case you want to get a little bit more in depth with print and cut. Making stickers with your Cricut is super simple. I'm going to download this Book Lovers printable sticker bundle here. So all I have to do is click download files and then click on the file here. It's going to open up a folder and ask me where I want to save it. So for me, I save it into my Cricut folder and then I have a specific folder set for print and cut. So I'm going to save it in there and then click save. Now you need to make sure that you extract your folder. So go ahead and click the folder and then all you need to do is click extract all and click extract. And then it's going to open up your extracted folder. Now I'm going to make that a little bit smaller and I'm going to close out my extracted folder and then we can open this folder. And you can see, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. You can see that you have all of your different PNG images ready to upload into Design Space. So let's head over to Design Space and I'll show you how to upload these. Once over in Design Space, all you need to do is click Upload over on the left hand side and then it's going to bring up the Upload section where we can upload our image. All we have to do is we can either browse for the image, but the way I prefer to do it is I keep my folder open so I can just drag and drop. Now all I need to do is select my image and hold my left mouse button down and drag it over into Design Space and when Design Space turns green, let go of the mouse button and it's going to upload your image. Now with the PNG, it's going to give you the select image type. I always just choose complex. It's going to just give you a little bit better quality. Click continue and then from here, you shouldn't have to do anything else. All we have to do is click apply and continue. These are already set up with an offset and everything to make life super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and select that image and click upload. You want to make sure you select the print and cut image on the right hand side. I'm going to just do it one more time to show you. So I'm going to click upload image, open up that folder, select the image and go ahead and drag it and drop it into design space. Choose complex, click continue. And then all you have to do is click apply and continue. From here, make sure you save the print and cut image over here on the right hand side and click upload. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these. I'm going to add all the stickers and then I'm going to show you how to set them up on your canvas. Once you have all the designs that you want to use for your stickers, all you have to do is click on each one over here in your recently uploaded images. And at the bottom in the right, go ahead and click add to canvas. Now these are likely going to add pretty large. You'll see that they're going to come up in like a pretty big format. And that's the first thing we'll do is resize them. So now that I've got them all in here, I'm just going to do a quick, they're all selected. So all I'm going to do is just change them all to five inches wide. That way they're just smaller so I can see them on my screen. The next thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to change the color of my canvas because it's hard to see the offsets when it's white. So you can do that by clicking right under your layers panel. There's a section here. It's this blank canvas. If you click on that right in the center of your screen, it's going to say color. Click there and you can choose any color to make your background. So I'm just going to make it a light gray. It just makes it easier to see the offsets. That way you're not like confused and you can tell that everything has an offset. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit so you can see them better and see all the little images that we chose. So we've got just a couple of stickers. I didn't go too crazy, but you can add as many as you want. It's up to you. Do what makes you happy. The next thing that I like to do is make a template for the area that I have to print in. So I'm going to open up a shape and I'm going to use a square. Now, all I have to do here is I need to unlock the size of my square because it's not actually square. It's a rectangle. So up here at the top, go ahead and click the little lock button. Now you can print up to 7.44 wide by 9.94 high with a letter size eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to send this to the back. That way it's behind all of my stickers. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is line up all my stickers on my sheet. Now these are bigger than I would typically make. So typically my stickers, I tend to do them anywhere from about two to three inches wide, but really do whatever makes you happy, whatever you like. It's up to you and your size and how you like to do things. But that's usually the size I go. So for like something like this, where it's a little bit short, I usually do about two and a half. And what I'm gonna do is get that lined up with the top and the corner of my page. I'm just gonna resize each sticker kind of individually. That way I can justify and kind of see how big it's gonna be, you know, depending on what size I make it. So for example, like this one I made two inches wide and it's a little under two inches high. So that's a pretty good size for that sticker. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get everything resized. And as you can see, all I'm doing here is lining them up onto my sheet. So all I do is I figure out what size I wanna make them and then I lay them all so they're gonna fit on this dark gray sheet. So I'm just gonna keep going with this and I'm gonna fit as many as I can. You do however you want. So if you want like a really neat looking sticker sheet, you're probably not gonna be able to fit as many um, stickers on it because you're gonna wanna try to keep it neat and clean and even. But for me, I'm just gonna try to fit what I can and see how many I can actually squeeze on to this page because I like to see what I can fit. So as you can see, all I do is I select each sticker and then I just make it the size that I think I want it to be. Like I said, I don't make really big stickers, so I like to make a little bit smaller, but you make what you want. And then I'm just gonna kind of get them lined up where I want. Now this one's kind of a little awkwardly shaped, but I think he'll fit really nicely right here. Now you can see I have a ton of open space on my sticker sheet. So one, I could make the stickers bigger if I wanted to, but what I am gonna do instead is use this duplicate option over here on my layers panel, and I'm gonna duplicate a couple stickers so that I can just fill in some space and some area, and that way I'm not wasting. And it's always nice to have like a couple extra stickers, and I'm gonna make some small ones that'll fit over in like the corners, just so that I can really use up as much space as I can on my um, blank page here. So I am just gonna kind of squeeze things together, see what I can fit and just have fun with it. So you'll see here that all I'm doing is just kind of fitting stuff where I can. Now, for example, like with this one, if I turn this one sideways, I could fit it between these two. So I can just turn it sideways and squeeze it right on in and that takes up a little bit less space. So I'm gonna finish filling the sheet out since you've seen how I did it. I'm gonna also resize possibly a couple stickers. Like this one's kind of big, so I think I'm gonna just size it down a little bit more so that I can fit a few more stickers. So I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll come right back. All right, I have filled in my entire design here. So I think I could fit something right here, but like, do I need to? No, but we can. So let's go ahead and just do it really quick. So I'm gonna use these cats. I'm gonna size them down a little bit. I'm gonna turn them sideways because I think that's the only way they're really gonna fit in here. And then I just need to size them down a little bit more. And there we go. So now we've got our stickers all set up where we want them to be on our print and cut sheet. Now what I wanna do is scroll down to the bottom and I'm gonna hide the square by using the little eye next to it in my design space. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird. So design space claims that we can print and cut 7.44 by 9.94. But a lot of times when you select all of your images and attach them, because you've laid them out so you can fit as many as you can on a sheet, it may tell us that it's too big. So I'm gonna click attach and we'll see what it says. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So in this case, it is telling us it's too big. So while they give us a print setting and a print size, it's not always correct. So what you can do is if you click on the red little exclamation point, it will tell you how big you can go. So this says 6.76 by 9.11, which is a little bit smaller. Now, if you want your stickers to be a specific size, don't size them like this. You'll need to go back in and like rearrange things. But because I don't really care, I'm just gonna size this down just a little bit by using the um, bounding box. So all I'm doing is just sizing it super slowly and design space is being a little bit slow right now, I think, cause it's got a lot of um, pictures on here, some high quality pictures, which is gonna make it be a little bit slow. Since we know what size it says, it says 6.76, I'm gonna go ahead and just come up here and change it to 6.76 and hit enter, and then it should be just fine. Now, another option for this is you can always flatten it once you've gotten it to the point where you want it if design space is being a little bit slow. 
Flatten just tells Design Space not to cut around any areas, but because we have all these transparent sections, so everywhere you see gray is where it's going to cut around. All the white is going to stay, but the gray part is what it's going to cut around. So that's one way to know like where it's going to cut with your stickers. I'm going to link below a couple other tutorials that go into more detail as far as like how to know what's going to cut on your sticker, how to know what you need to flatten and all of that. I think those will be very, very helpful, but this is more just taking PNGs and printing them out to make a sticker sheet. So now once we're happy with this, I am going to save my project because I want to make sure that I don't lose all the work that I just did because sometimes design space is a little bit weird as we all know. And a lot of times when you hit make it is when we run into problems. So now that my project is saved, I'm gonna click the make button and it's gonna take us over on to our mats. The mats are what it's actually gonna look like when you input these into the machine. Now you'll see here that we've got this all sized and it's pretty big, it's like a decent size, so it's pretty good. Now what we need to do from here is click continue. This is going to give us our printer options and for this, you wanna make sure that you use some different settings on your printer to make sure that you're gonna get your best quality possible. So Click send to printer and that's not going to send it to printer. It's just opening up our print setup. From our print setup, we're gonna do a couple things. Now for this one, I'm gonna leave bleed on, but bleed really only matters if the color of your sticker, so if you have like a black outline on your sticker and it's cutting directly around that black outline, it's gonna push that black outline out just a little bit further so that if it cuts slightly off, you're not gonna have any white background showing. But I do just recommend leaving that on pretty much all the time anyways. There's not really a reason to turn it off. Then what you're gonna do is use your system dialog. So go ahead and click that. And this is gonna bring up your printer preference settings. When you click print, it's not gonna send it to your printer right now because it's gonna open up those printer settings. So give it just a second to open those up and I think it's gonna work really well for you. Over here, you're gonna make sure that you have the printer that you wanna use selected. I'm using my EcoTank by Epson. Love this printer, fantastic. I'll link one down below. They don't make the same model I have anymore, but the one that they make now is really similar and it's a great price. Then what I wanna do is choose preferences because that's gonna give me the options to make sure that this prints out really good quality. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna change my paper type. Now, depending on what kind of paper you're using, it may depend on the paper type that you choose. I'm using some Neato printable uh, labels. So for those, I find that the premium presentation paper matte works fantastic. Then I wanna make sure that I change my quality from standard to high. I wanna make sure that color is selected and I need to change one more setting. Over under more options, I wanna turn off my high speed print. Now on some printers, it's listed as bio-directional printing. So if you wanna make sure that you get really good quality stickers without any like lines through the images, make sure that you turn off that high speed print. Then all you have to do is click okay and click print to send it to the printer. I'm gonna be using a green mat with this cause this mat is getting a little bit less sticky, but I would recommend if you're using a newer mat, use a blue mat but I'm gonna put this on and when you do stickers, you want to make sure that the top of your sheet is at the top of your mat. So you wanna load in the top of the sheet into your Cricut. Uh, meaning that this should look exactly like it looks on Design Space with the top up here, the bottom down here. I'm gonna load this in and what's gonna happen is a light's gonna turn on in the middle of our uh, little reader here and that's gonna be your sensor light. It's gonna go ahead and read the corner lines and then that'll tell it where to cut around each of our stickers. It does take a minute, but it's really, really cool and totally worth the wait. So now that your stickers are cut out, what I like to do is I always check my cut setting. I did this on the copy paper setting. I wasn't super confident on that setting, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just take my pin pen and I'm just gonna pick one of the stickers and see if I can lift it off of the backing. It looks like it actually cut really well on that copy paper setting, it did. So once you're, you know that it's cut well, you can go ahead and unload your sticker paper. I'm gonna go ahead and move my machine off to the side, that way it's out of our way. And then when you remove paper from your mat, you wanna flip it over and you want to just roll it off. Now I do have a spot where it cut a little deep. 
Uh, there's a little thing on my mat. I can see I've got a little piece of paper stuck right where that was. So that caused it to cut through a little bit, but that's okay. No big deal. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You could have cut all the way through and made them die cut stickers, but because I wanted to keep these in a sticker sheet, I'm gonna go ahead and just peel off the main part of the backing. And then I'll use my paper trimmer later to cut this down. But this is gonna make it easier for like anybody who buys this or if you give this to somebody or even yourself to peel the stickers off when you wanna use them if you don't wanna do what's called a die cut sticker, which is when it cuts all the way through. Now, sometimes I have a hard time getting the backing to come off. Um, it just depends on the day. But sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain. There we go. I got it. So now you want to go slow just so you make sure that everything cut really nice and it should have, but you just want to take your time and you want to make sure that you're not going to like lift any stickers or rip anything. So it's just like when you weed vinyl, just take your time, especially in any of those like sharp cornered areas or like the sections that it has to go in between the stickers. You just want to make sure that you're being really careful to make sure you're not picking up anything you shouldn't. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this off and then look how nice this looks. Once you get that backing off, it looks like such a nice professional sticker sheet. You can just toss this off to the side and now you have this really nice sheet of stickers and they're so pretty. They came out so nice and crisp. And this is just a really easy thing that you can do with your Cricut. Now, if you guys have any questions about this or any of the other things that we do here on the channel, by all means, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure that you're also subscribed. It's totally free to subscribe, and I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting.